tonight. Give us 90 minutes. We'll give you the year with Katie Couric. If it happened in 2012, we've got it. A dollar makes me holler, honey, boo-boo. The Newsmakers. I love Big Bird. Music Makers. I'd be a little afraid you were going to write a song about me. I'm a gangster, Miss Katie. And Baby Makers. Ding, ding, ding. Our guilty pleasure addictions from a dance craze. Oh, 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 oh. To a book craze. Fifty Shades of Grey, the porn you're allowed to read. From the man who took off by taking it off. <laughs> to all the couples. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. Broke it off. From Tom and Katie to Seal and Heidi. Sometimes you're in and sometimes I dump you, Seal. The breakout stars who made a splash. Our girls all over you, basically. And the tarnished stars who just sank all the way to the bottom of the dishonor roll. He has no political future. Next question. Plus, forget the Hunger Games. We're introducing the Anger Games. The Fuse. Wig shaking, finger nail wagging, crazy lady drama. The Nudes. And a different kind of royal watch. When I first saw it, I was like, man, this girl's crazy. This girl's crazy. <laughs> Tonight, it's everything you can't forget. But here's my number, so call me baby. Everyone got into the act. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. Everything you'd like to forget. Oh, Lindsay. Everything you can't believe. You. It's the year with Katie Couric. Hi, everyone. Please don't call me, and there's no maybe about it, with your complaints about planning that song in your heads, but it really was the anthem for 2012. Carly Rae Jepsen may have had our number, but this year we've got some numbers for her. Everything from One Direction to 47% to 50 Shades to close to a billion hits of Gangnam Style. So here's our look back with People Magazine at a year that had something for everyone. And however you add it up, what a year it was. Ah, celebrity romance. The love that lasts forever. From bad boys to billionaires to bachelorettes, there were plenty of fairy tale weddings to go around. Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel got married in Puglia, Italy. Yes, Jessica, for getting married and having some little bangs and a pink dress. Get it. He was jumping all around on that People's Magazine cover. He looked like he's 20 feet in the air. He's literally leaping in the air. He's so happy. And Jessica is sitting serenely in front of him, sort of like, does he look like a jackass? From Justin and Jessica's chateau in Italy to a plantation in Charleston, South Carolina, Ryan Reynolds tied the knot with his second wife, gossip girl Blake Lively. He just keeps getting another gorgeous girl after gorgeous girl. Well, hopefully this will be the last gorgeous girl. I'm pulling for him. Somebody's got to go ahead and die with the person they marry. <laughs> right? Somebody's got to do it. But if it don't work out, it's another gorgeous girl coming. One gorgeous girl took going all the way to the bank. Swift's smash breakup anthem of the year, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, made breaking up something to sing about. Like, ever. Like her Cape Cod summer fling with 18 year old Connor Kennedy, son of Robert and the late Mary Kennedy, which fizzled after only a few months. I don't know if I hung out with you, I'd be a little afraid you were going to write a song about me. The only time that's been an issue is when I was like going through a really bad breakup with a guy and he's like, you better not write about this. And I'm like, oh, I won't. Did you? Yes. <laughs> Getting back together, we are never, ever. So you might as well watch the movie if you want to get the soundtrack anyway. So yeah, who's your name? But it was the failed long-term relationships in 2012 that were the most surprising, like Amy Poehler and Will Arnett 
married nine years. Jenny Garth and Peter Facinelli, 11 years. Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis, never married, but together 14 years. And Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman hit a rocky road after 30 years. Yeah, it was a bad year for having faith in relationships. Including Heidi and Seal, who famously renewed their vows every year for six years. At year seven, though, things began to get a little itchy. One day you're in, and the next day, you're out. Sometimes you're in, and sometimes I dump you. <laughs> See you. The split seemed amicable at first, until rumors swirled that Heidi was having an affair with Martin Kirsten, the family bodyguard. And El Seal got angry, saying she's sleeping with the help. <laughs> Maybe, maybe the help told her what she needed to hear. You is kind, you is smart, you is important. I think a lot of people were a little put off by his, mm -hmm. his word choice. It obviously is not true when, you know, I've never looked at another man while I was with him. That may have been true, but by year's end, the supermodel mom has officially moved on with her bodyguard. Don't have a grown man knowing where your wife sleep. <laughs> I just came in to tuck her in and make sure she's safe. Heidi, I'm security. You safe? There was another well-known scandal this year that involved Twilight's on-screen and off-screen couple. I've had a bad habit of underestimating you. Rob Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. When news broke that Kristen was caught cheating with her Snow White and the Huntsman director, Rupert Sanders, Twilight fans felt like someone had put a stake through their hearts. You don't go and, and tarnish this epic love story that so many people feel invested in. She doesn't strike me as the vixen. It's hard to be a vixen when you only got one facial expression. With their breakup now more public than their four-year romance, Kristen fought for her guy. <clears throat> I want to be your girl. This momentary indiscretion has jeopardized the most important thing in my life, the person I love and respect the most, Rob. I love him. I love him. I'm so sorry. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, especially if you know you were wrong. Yes, you can't be above begging. Baby, please. So Robert Pattinson takes her back. And at the end of the story, both Robert and Kristen still look as miserable and sullen as they ever did when they were in love. But the breakup of all breakups this year? Have you ever felt this way? Before? <laughs> the only person who was really surprised, Tom Cruise. The Tomcat divorce played out like a Hollywood movie. <laughs> Topping the tabloid box office for weeks. This was handled like a Navy SEAL Team 6 operation. Played out like Mission Impossible. And this is like Homeland. Find him. Find him fast. It was like something out of a spy novel. She got out of there under cover of night. Can you have to run to New York of all places? I'd rather be on 42nd Street at midnight than with Tom Cruise. Who would have thought that the scariest man basically in the world is a divorce attorney from Toledo, Ohio? Martin Holmes, Katie's dad, don't mess with him. A blindsided Tom Cruise had gone from a married man to a single dad in just 11 days. It happened so quick, in fact, that I didn't even have a chance to pick sides. I didn't even get a chance to pray for Lil Suri. From breakups to babies, it was Drew Barrymore who had a lot to celebrate in 2012, a new husband in June, and baby Olive in September. Is her middle name Oil? Olive oil copper. I guess it has a ring to it. Young hope, y'all know when the flow is slow. One crazy in love couple, Beyonce and Jay-Z, added another bizarre baby name to this year's list. We've come a long way, baby, yes, we right? Have. And baby? <laughs> yes. Oh sorry. Am I allowed to do that? Blue Ivy, their hotly awaited bundle, finally made her debut. Or wait, is it Ivy Blue? Blue Ivy TM. It's been trademarked. Its name is Blue Ivy, and it already owns a Little League team in Brooklyn. Jessica Simpson welcomed her first baby with fiance Eric Johnson before their big day. Have you set a date? We have not. It won't be this year. Matt Maxwell has definitely taken up all of our time, and I want to do a really big, fun wedding. But with baby number two on the way just seven months after giving birth, let's put a big old TBD on that one. Hi. Hi. They say motherhood really changes a person. 
And this year, it couldn't be more true than for Snooki. Where's my boyfriend? Gianni! Wow. <laughs> Snooki's a mom. She held it and she looked at it and she's like, oh my God, this thing is not nearly as tan as I am. And she realized maybe she's living her life weird. She's no longer falling on her face on the sands of the Jersey Shore. But Snooki as a responsible mother is uh, a great leap in mankind. Next, making headlines for all the wrong reasons. The 2012 Dishonor Roll. I'll be back. Yeah, for the second year in a row. And later, the guilty pleasure addictions we were allowed to have. Guilty is known as the learning channel. What were we supposed to learn from Honey Boo Boo? Plus, celebrity feuds, Nikki and Mariah. Crazy lady drama. When the Year with Katie Couric returns. We return to The Year with Katie Couric. Now, the 2012 Dishonor Roll. Now on to the people who made headlines for all the wrong reasons. It's the Dishonor Roll of the Year. First up, what some are calling one of the biggest falls from grace in the sports world, Lance Armstrong. After years of allegations of doping and steroid use by cycling's most decorated name, it happened. UCI will ban Lance Armstrong from cycling, and UCI will strip him of his seven Tour de France titles. Also gone, millions of dollars in endorsement deals from sponsors who dropped him in the wake of the ban. The thing about Lance Armstrong is, if you're gonna lie about something, there's gotta be a point where you say, okay, I was lying. He never did that, and I think it really worked against him. Armstrong also stepped down as chairman of Livestrong, the cancer charity he founded in 1997 that has raised nearly $500 million. It's ultimately very sad. It's a very highly regarded charity, but it's forever mixed up now with a man who will be synonymous with cheating. Cheating will also follow this famous politician. I'll be back. And he is back. Arnold Schwarzenegger is on our dishonor roll for a second year running. Why? Exhibit A. Is that the only affair? No. I doubt it, but I mean, uh, yeah. but the, you know, that's something that's obviously between Marie and me. The idea that he wouldn't be vilified for being so dismissive about what he did just seemed remarkable. The late night comics terminated the star. Arnold Schwarzenegger said you can't run from your mistakes, you have to confront them. Yeah, especially if they look exactly like you and keep calling you dad. <laughs> My God, that baby he had looked exactly like him. That's telling more than that book could have told. You understand what I mean? They look like twins coming and going. Someone else with baby mama drama was John Edwards, but that's not the reason he almost went to prison. In his campaign finance trial this year, Edwards was acquitted on one charge, but jurors were deadlocked on the remaining five counts, sparing Edwards what could have been a hefty fine and lengthy prison sentence. I guess the jury had to make some decisions and they had to be guided not to make them based on their own moral principles. You listen to the jurors after that case, and it's clear that they didn't think John Edwards was a wonderful human being. But in high-profile cases like this, you very often see jurors sticking very strictly to the letter of the law and the judge's instructions because they know the world is watching. And the world watched as Edwards owned up for the very first time to his baby with Riel Hunter. My precious Quinn, who I love, more than any of you could ever imagine. And I am so close to and so, so grateful for. So what does the future hold? I don't think God's through with me. He has no political future. Next question. He's, he's, there's no political future for him. Next up, we value and respect them for keeping secrets and keeping us safe but they've each landed on our dishonor roll for scandals they couldn't keep quiet. 
For CIA Director General David Petraeus, it was an extramarital affair with biographer Paula Broadwell. The complex details confused a lot of us. I couldn't keep up with who begat who. I could, it was so many different players in the game. But one thing I will say about all of that, even though it was confusing, each party involved ended up with whoever they came to the party with, huh? They still dancing with the one that brought them. Government agents, prostitution, alcohol, and a foreign land. It has the makings of a juicy novel, but it's actually the real life scandal that rocked the Secret Service this August. It seems these guys didn't realize that there's a difference between what's legal and what's kosher. Uh, sure. It was legal where they were doing it, but that still doesn't mean that it's okay. My problem is you're secret service agents and you couldn't keep a secret. They all have like shaved heads and aviator sunglasses and earpieces. People are going to know, even if you're wearing like a Hawaiian shirt, going out to the club, like you're a secret service agent. Stop it. Finally, a walk through the gallery of celebrity mugshots, certainly not their best work. Sally Struthers. Sean White, Amanda Bynes, Randy Travis, and sadly, there's Lindsay Lohan, who's in the running to start her own gallery of photos from over the years. Oh, Lindsay, you got the substance abuse, you got the car accidents, you got the fighting, you got Liz and Dick. It's a lot. I just want to bring her home. Like, you just find a little wet cat outside and be like, come here, baby. Let me get you together. As a new year is set to begin, let's hope these celebrities stick to the photo shoots they want us to see instead of those they don't. Next. If it was worth talking about, it was worth tweeting about, mostly. We don't need to know that you just went to go pee and had a bagel at the same time. Hashtag oops. And later, forget about less is more. It was the year of Flesh Is More. From Magic Mike to Racy Ryan. See you later. When we return. The year in social media. Once again, Katie Couric. If it happened in 2012, you probably saw it on social media. The events of the year weren't just taking place in front of you, they were taking place with you. Such an unusual storm, a once in a generation event. As a superstorm raged, uh -oh. you were sharing hundreds of first hand videos. Oh my God! We do have breaking news tonight. When a legend passed, you were posting millions of comments. Listen to the crowd out in Times Square. And as a president was elected, you were tweeting over 300,000 tweets per minute. The site that started it all, Facebook, had a lot to like in 2012 when it reached 1 billion users. And a relationship status update. CEO Mark Zuckerberg went from in a relationship to married with longtime girlfriend Priscilla Chan. So let's do this. But it wasn't all good news on the timeline. After much hype surrounding Facebook's IPO, disappointment on Wall Street left people wondering, what just happened? After a day of trading, shares were only worth 23 cents more than where they started. The person I feel worse for is Zuckerberg, because he went from being a billionaire to still a billionaire. It's gotta be rough. If you watched any television show in 2012, you might have noticed something new. It's there right now. No, not a number sign. It's a hashtag. The little pound sign that started as a way to organize conversations on Twitter is now a cultural sensation. People have started using hashtags almost as strange parentheses where they say what they're really thinking as opposed to what they just wrote. Over the shoulder, Nikki! The app that brought us the hashtag also let us see celebrities in a whole new way. That's a new phenomenon, the celebrity who overshares on Twitter. We don't need to know that you just went to go pee and had a bagel at the same time. 
Celebrities who are using Twitter don't always have a publicist standing next to them. So the people who tell celebrities, you shouldn't say that, they can't stop them from suddenly sending out a tweet in which they, oops, attach a naked photo. And you're wasting my time. You HBO's newsroom starlet, Allison Pill, accidentally sent this topless tweet while trying to delete it from her phone. Hashtag, oops. Justin Bieber was almost sued when he tweeted, call me right now with this phone number. The last digit, a question mark. Frenzied fans dialed every combination of the number. Justin, oh my God, call me back, I love you. Bieber's phone never rang, but for these Dallas residents, it never stopped. I was getting three calls a second, and, and as fast as I could hang up the phone, it kept ringing and ringing. Hashtag, don't call me maybe. It wasn't just Twitter and Facebook monopolizing our time this year. The rising stars Instagram and Pinterest seem to come out of nowhere. But the true breakout star of social media in 2012, the meme. But what is it? A meme is an instant trend based on an image that has often been manipulated. When Mitt Romney threatened to cut off PBS during the first presidential debate. Sorry, Jim, I I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. I'm going to stop other things. I like PBS. I love Big Bird. Big Bird. Big Bird. Thousands flocked to Facebook, sharing Save Big Bird memes. A member of the Fab Five, Michaela Maroney, became a social media sensation after making this face on the metal stand. For a split second, she was biting the side of her lip, and she looked unimpressed. The moment was quickly coined, Michaela is not impressed. And so was the meme. To make that face, you basically have to look as disdainful as you possibly can. Maroney took the look on her media tour, and everyone from David Letterman to the president himself gave it a shot. Amongst all the tweeting, sharing, posting, and pinning, there was one image that stood out from them all. So it turned out that Obama won the social media battle by a lot. This photo of President Obama and First Lady Michelle is the most liked picture on Facebook and the most retweeted of all time. It was very intimate and very small, and it showed a gesture between a husband and a wife. It was a first in election history. It was the first time that a president acknowledged that he had won his election in a tweet, and it's a sign to come of how leaders are gonna try to communicate directly to their supporters using social media. So what's next for social media in 2013? Well, you'll just have to follow to find out. Okay, all you tweeters out there, here's your chance to meme me. Here's the picture. You come up with a caption and tweet it back to us at hashtag Katie Meme. No prizes, just a chance to show off how clever you are. And I said clever, by the way, not dirty. We'll show you some of the great ones we've already gotten at the end of the show. Hey, I just met you. This is crazy. But here's my number. So call me maybe. Call it a crush. Yeah. Call it a guilty pleasure. Call it a boo boo child. But there were plenty of people we got addicted to this year. They called and we answered. What a year you've had. How would you describe it? Um, sort of like a good dream come true, for sure. Carly Rae Jepsen's catchy song, Call Me Maybe, propelled this past second runner-up of Canadian Idol into superstardom. In fact, releasing your own YouTube Call Me Maybe video became the game of the summer. First dozens appeared, and then hundreds, from school teachers to topless servicemen in Afghanistan. I was standing waiting for a subway in New York City, and there were rats filming themselves for this video, okay? Like, everyone got into the act. Let me just get your quick reaction to some of these. The Olympic swim team's version. 
They, it all blows me out of the water. It's amazing. Yeah. So to speak. <laughs> the Miami Dolphin cheerleaders. I had a lot of guy friends thanking me for that one. <laughs> so I'm like, well done. <laughs> Cookie Monster is one of my favorites. Why? Because I grew up on Sesame Street and I just would have never thought when I was my younger self that one day Cookie Monster would cover me one of my songs. <laughs> you got cookie, so share it, baby. From an addictive song to a steamy trilogy we couldn't put down, Fifty Shades of Grey had us turning Fifty Shades of Red. I have read all three volumes of Fifty Shades of Grey, and I'm hoping there will be a fourth. There, I said it. Lock me up. Just don't tie me up. Fifty Shades of Grey, the porn you're allowed to read. Walk around, you see women looking a lot more relaxed this year. Like, man, why your wife so relaxed? She went to Hawaii? From three books to six packs, our next addiction, Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum, who was our sexy man of the year, made his bones in Magic Mike and in uh, 21 Jump Street. I think the sky's the limit for this guy. He has the perfect pitch for a future in, in movie dome. When a man who looks like Channing Tatum takes off his clothes, he deserves to be rewarded. It worked for Olympian Ryan Lochte, who was rewarded with more than just five Olympic medals. It's all paid off for Lochte, who's going to win Olympic gold in the 400 IM. What a difference a year makes. What has it been like for you to go from somebody nobody knew to a household name? It's crazy. Um, I never thought that swimming would get me to the point where I'm at right now. The swimmer with the movie star good looks landed major endorsement deals. I'm Ryan Lochte. You're Ryan Lochte. And several acting gigs. I love you. Yeah, he's a god. What's up? Even a turn as a sex idiot on 30 Rock. Ryan is my sex idiot. This whole experience hasn't been totally positive. You know, people have been mocking you in a way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you played a sex idiot on 30 Rock. Yeah. Did you say, uh, I'm not sure if I want to do that? I mean, I definitely wanted to be on 30 Rock, and yeah, like the whole sex oh, idiot Mindy, thing. Mindy. No, Ryan Lochte. Can we focus? At the same time, it's kind of flattering. Like the same thing with um, that SNL skit. It feels so weird to be dry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anytime you get made fun of, especially on SNL, you know you made it. And a TV star who really made it this year, a pint-sized Georgia peach with a potty mouth. The other day, Honey Boo Boo endorsed me. So that's a big relief. Yep, even the president was talking about Honey Boo Boo. TLC is supposed, you know, is known as the learning channel. What were we supposed to learn from Honey Boo Boo? I'm going to win the big title, baby. TLC, come on now. Audiences don't know whether to laugh with them or at them, but they couldn't stop watching. <laughs> To help describe our addictions in 2012, a new word was added to the dictionary this year. Earworm, the name for a song that's hard to get out of your head. If you were a teenager, that earworm came from just one direction. And for everyone else, who could have predicted just a year ago that the world would be addicted to a silly song sung in Korean? You have to gallop like Tancho to, to sell it. It's not like Thriller or one of these other, you know, videos where it's hard to learn all the steps. All you gotta do is act like you've been riding a horse too long and you got it. Gangnam Style is now the most watched video in the history of YouTube, soon to pass one billion views. And the dance is a worldwide phenomenon inspiring hundreds of copycats. NASA Johnson Style. So, call them obsessions, call them guilty pleasures. They're the addictions we couldn't let go, even if we wanted to. Call Me Baby is the only weapon you can use to fight Gangnam Style. You have to 
get the way you get Gangnam Style out is you put Call Me Maybe in. Next, the most emotional breaking news moments of the year. From a hurricane that took our power away to a school shooting that just took our hearts away. And now, the newsmakers of the year with Katie Couric. Shocking. Yeah, this is the worst I've seen. We're going to die. It's the perfect storm. The rain has really picked up. The beach used to be about 150 yards that way. We already have rescues ongoing. Hurricane Sandy descended on the northeast and washed away century-old seaside attractions. This roller coaster here is still standing, although now it's several hundred yards in the middle of the ocean. Destroyed houses, streets, even entire communities. The water went up to my neck, sometimes it went over my head. And made the Big Apple look more like the Big Easy after Katrina. Sandy's death toll is at 106 people. Despite the warnings, despite climate science, despite increasingly extreme weather all around the globe, nobody expected this to happen here. The record-breaking storm left many people wondering where they could feel absolutely safe and secure in 2012. Aboard a luxury cruise ship? In calm seas, just off the Italian Tuscan coast, Get the kids, go. the coast of Concordia struck a rock and slowly sank. At least 32 souls were lost. How about a secured U.S. diplomatic compound? The U.S. ambassador to Libya has been killed. It happened overnight. The terrorist attack on what turned out to be an inadequately protected State Department facility in Benghazi, Libya, took the lives of Ambassador J. Christopher Stevens and three other members of the diplomatic mission. What happened in Benghazi was tragic proof that last year's Arab Spring was this year's winter of discontent. Bloodshed, heartbreak, and anger in the Middle East. But the fight in Syria has dragged on and on. Gazans are furious over the civilian deaths. Israel poised to invade Gaza. Tonight, 10,000 Egyptians taking the fight over their future to the presidential palace. There's growing anger over the killing of a Florida teenager. That case now generating outrage across this country. One story that divided the nation on what it means to be safe and secure was Trayvon Martin. This unarmed 17-year-old was shot and killed inside a Florida-gated community <laughs> by George Zimmerman, a neighborhood watch coordinator. People just had very, very strong reactions to it. Initially, Zimmerman was not even charged with a crime. Florida's Stand Your Ground law allows any citizen to use deadly force when he or she reasonably feels threatened. This whole situation is a nightmare. Trayvon Martin's family says a teenager armed with a soda and a bag of candy presents no reasonable threat, and the law should protect such innocent people from being gunned down. Do you think this will change the way we, as a country, are protecting ourselves? If there were going to be major changes as a result of the Trayvon Martin case, I think they would have already happened. Perhaps safety and security comes from knowing that even in the darkest and most troubling circumstances, our best selves can somehow shine through. This year, all across the country and around the world, heroes were made, even when it meant putting their own lives in jeopardy. Half a world away, 15-year-old Malala Yousafzai was riding in a school bus when Taliban gunmen stormed the bus and shot her in the head. She has had one bullet removed, still unconscious. The attack was retaliation for her bravery in speaking out publicly. Please welcome Malala Yousafzai. On the need to educate girls in Pakistan. They cannot stop me. I will get my education if it is in home, school, or any place. Malala survived the shooting and is now recovering. She fearlessly continues to advocate for the rights of girls to get an education in her homeland. Night at the movies has turned into a nightmare. I got seven down in the night. At least 12 have been confirmed dead. In Aurora, Colorado, deranged gunman James Holmes executed 12 and wounded 59 others 
when he opened fire in a local cineplex. It happened during the midnight showing of the newest Batman movie. They're saying somebody's shooting in the auditorium. The idea that a movie theater, a place where you can gather in peace with your family to enjoy um, pop culture, could become such a killing ground was just absolutely horrifying to people. I've got a child victim. I need rescue at the back door of Theater 9 now. Amanda Lindgren was there and knows the death toll would have been even higher if not for the courage of the people trapped inside that fateful theater, including her boyfriend, Alex Tevis, who lost his life saving hers. He covered my head and he said, shh, stay down, it's okay, shh, stay down. Sadly, the senseless violence in Aurora, often described as unimaginable or unspeakable, once again proved to be neither. Yeah, these units are cool. I got uh, bodies here. We're all still reeling from the massacre inside Sandy Hook Elementary School, an act so shocking and incomprehensible that it left everyone with a grief almost too consuming to express. Beautiful little kids between the ages of five and 10 years old. But as evil descended on this school, there are 27 victims, 20 children, seven adults. Heroes would arise. Teachers and staff members risked their own lives to protect the children they not only educated, but loved. I said, I need you to know that I love you all very much and that it's going to be okay because I thought that was the last thing they were ever gonna hear. Principal Don Hawksprung and school psychologist Mary Sherlock courageously tried to stop the heavily armed 20-year-old gunman. Both women lost their lives trying to save others. This week, Newtown began the agonizing ordeal of laying to rest those killed in the rampage. An onlooker collapsed as the procession passed. Parents, brothers and sisters, extended family and friends of those lost in this tragedy will then begin the daunting task of finding the strength to go on. We can't tolerate this anymore. These tragedies must end. I spoke to one family in the midst of unspeakable pain. You all have two little girls in addition to Emily. Right. Madeline's four and Samantha's three. And do they understand at all what's happened? Um, they just know that their best friend hasn't been around and as far as what that's going to mean to them as the days go on and past, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Perhaps some of the strength they'll need will come from the example set this year by all the people who somehow found their own strength to act heroically and selflessly. Out of a tragedy, moments of heroism and courage can emerge is what binds us all together. Next. The royal family, like you've never seen them before. Who the hell wrote this script? <laughs> From dancing to disrobing, even skydiving. I was like, man, this girl's crazy. This girl's crazy. <laughs> Plus, the royal baby bump watch. Coming up. The year with Katie Couric continues now with the royals. The royal heir is on the way. Kate Middleton is pregnant. Prince William and Kate are expecting a royal baby. It was the news royal watchers have been waiting for. Prince William and his wife Catherine are having a baby. It was the perfect ender for a year that celebrated royalty. Queen Elizabeth, 60 years on the throne. What was very special for me to see is that type of outpouring is usually reserved when someone has passed away. And yet the Queen got to step out on the balcony at Buckingham Palace and look out and see that it's mattered. She's made a difference. She stands out to the people and she's appreciated. The year-long Jubilee celebration marked a dramatic shift in the reserve of the royal family. There was the royal family hosting a blowout concert on their doorstep. And on their rooftop. Our house in the middle of our streets. 
There was Prince Charles showing his lighter side for a BBC weather segment. Who the hell wrote this script? <laughs> and then there was the Olympics. The whole country was watching as James Bond entered the reception room. You're thinking, that can't be the Queen. There's no way that's the Queen. Good evening, Mr. Bond. She turned around and was like, oh my Good goodness, it's her, it's her. The Queen joined James Bond and parachuted her way into Olympic history. It may have been a stunt double, but even Olympian Ryan Lochte was impressed. When I first saw it, I was like, man, this girl's crazy. I was like, this is awesome. This girl's crazy. <laughs> I don't think anybody said that of Queen, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth in her lifetime. Please stand for Her Majesty the Queen. I think the Queen jumping out of the plane with James Bond represents the rebranding of the royal family. They have completely come around. This year, I had the rare opportunity to meet the Queen. It's an honor to meet you, Your Majesty. Thank you for inviting us and talk to her grandchildren, who opened up like never before about their lives and their respect for their grandmother. What do you call her? I call her Granny. What do you call your grandmother? <laughs> I called my grandmother Nana. Yeah, I suppose that there are other options. <laughs> yeah. But no, I don't, I don't call her Majesty. I heard that if she is displeased after the fact, yeah. she has no problem letting is you know it. Oh, no, no, definitely not. You know when you're on your bad books, definitely. It's horrid, isn't it? Without my face there. Horrible. <laughs> Have you ever been yeah, oh, chewed out I, by I, her? Yeah, I've been in a Babbitt several times, yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah, and I've seen the way the corgis get told off when they're in trouble, so, you know, I don't want to go there. The new Duchess slipped into her new role with style. She gave her first address. What you have all achieved here is extraordinary. Accompanied the Queen on an official engagement and toured the South Pacific with her husband to mark the Diamond Jubilee. For me, my particular favorite was their arrival in Tuvalu. To see William dancing in a grass skirt and Kate getting the giggles, again, it just shows you how tight their relationship is, how much they respect each other. There was a small issue in the middle of the royal tour involving some photos of Kate uh, that I think everybody wished had not surfaced. A topless photo scandal rocks the royal palace. I felt for her because technically she wasn't doing anything wrong. She was on holiday with her husband. She believed herself to be private. But if anything came from those photographs, it proved that Kate is the perfect person for this job. She was stoic. She was poised. She had a smile on her face. She was gracious. Prince Harry had his own photo controversy, some compromising shots in a Las Vegas hotel. But the palace stood by the prince, and the story didn't put a dent in his popularity. Well, these minor scandals with Harry playing whatever, you know, strip pole in, in Las Vegas and Kate appearing topless, I think in many cases just endeared them. And I think folks said, give them a break. Um, it's okay. In fact, on Prince Harry's own Jubilee tour through the Caribbean, his lack of pretense and spontaneity proved a valuable asset. This year, Harry even revealed his brother isn't the only royal prince with babies on the brain. I've longed for kids since I was very, very young. Um, so I'm just find, I'm waiting to find the right person, someone who's willing to uh, take on the job. Kate, how are you feeling? Heading into 2013, all attention is on the Duchess's health as she struggles with a difficult pregnancy. And on that royal baby bump, the future king or queen of England, which another future king takes in stride. Is it annoying that your family planning is making headlines around the world? That well, must be very strange. It is quite strange reading about it, but um, I try not to let it bother me. But I'm just very keen to have a family, and um, both Catherine and I you know, are looking forward to having a family in the future. Next, Celebrity Feuds from Nikki and Mariah. You don't put those two ladies in the same room together, let alone within six feet of each other. To Chris Brown and, well, take your pick. Can we just agree that Chris Brown is the worst? Coming up. The Year with Katie Couric continues now with Celebrity Feuds. 2012 was a year of epic battles. The Avengers. The Dark Knight Rises and The Amazing Spider-Man. But when it comes to bitter feuds, one blockbuster comes to mind. The Hunger Games featured kids 
trapped in a battle for survival. Well, the Hunger Games, you know, it was a huge hit. You're kind of like, all right, they're not gonna kill these kids. And then they kill each other. So in the spirit of competition, we're holding some games of our own. The 2012 Anger Games start right now. Our first feud took place in the world of television. On the set of American Idol, an argument between Nikki and Mariah escalated into a media firestorm, as seen in this TMZ video. I felt so sad when I heard about Nikki and Mariah feuding. You don't put those two ladies in the same room together, let alone within six feet of each other. Ain't nobody gonna run me off that child and not expect at some point words are gonna be exchanged. Don't do it, ladies. Don't do it. The drama escalated as wild rumors leaked to the media. Anything that brings together Wigs and Barbara Walters is a gift. I called Mariah and she said that when Nikki walked off the set, multiple people heard Nikki say, if I had a gun, I would shoot, bitch. Ooh. And later, Nikki fired back, calling the rumors a fabrication. I've never in my life said anything regarding a gun. If you were gonna go with who had the classier route, it would be Mariah. But if the contest was who had the most street cred at the end of the fight, it would be Nikki. <laughs> so in that one, I'm gonna have to say ding, 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 it's a tie. Nikki and Mariah to be continued. Our next feud erupted in the world of music when two of pop's biggest names and their entourages met at a New York City nightclub. Glass flew, injuring bystanders and bruising reputations. All I know is that they were at a club, somebody threw a bottle. Why didn't they have like a dance-off? When they get a beef, it's like, what, you talking to me? Right? Now champagne bottles are being thrown. You got crazy, somebody got hit in the head with a bottle. None of this is adding up to Chris Brown seeming like a reformed person. Can we just agree that Chris Brown is the worst? You know, no, he seems like a really good guy. What, he beat Rihanna, he dressed like a terrorist for Halloween. He seems cool, I'm on his side. I don't know who his manager is, but like this guy needs guidance ASAP. And the winner is Drake. Now we go from the world of pop music to just pop and a battle in the streets of New York City. The mayor, the mayor, Michael Bloomberg. Mayor Bloomberg, soda banned. The first in the country to ban those supersized drinks. Mayor Bloomberg versus Big Soda. I read Nanny Mike and I read Soda Scrooge. Um, I don't know if those are derogatory terms. That's modern liberalism. <laughs> the delight embossing people around. There's something about telling people how much soda they can buy that makes people crazy. Everyone here should have the chance, the freedom, to pick what they want to drink and how big they want to drink it. Michael Bloomberg's always been pretty good at not caring that much about whether or not he's upsetting other people. I don't know how to answer your question if you don't have any understanding of science whatsoever. And the winner is Mayor Bloomberg. Our next feud takes place in the fast food industry. Chick-fil-A versus same-sex marriage. The fast food chain is the new ground zero in the culture wars over gay marriage. To date, nine states have legalized same-sex marriage, but not everyone in America is on board. This year, Dan Cathy, president of Chick-fil-A, let the world know that same-sex marriage was not on the menu at his nearly 2,000 restaurants across 38 states. I think we're inviting God's judgment on our nation when we shake our fist at him and say, you know, we know better than you as to what constitutes a marriage. The owner of Chick-fil-A can say anything you want, and as a result, consumers can say, I don't like what you're saying, and I'm not going to buy chicken at your particular establishments. Despite boycotters, sales at Chick-fil-A restaurants across the country hit record highs on Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day. This is my second one today, and I'll do another one tonight. Does it have to be Chick-fil-A? Does it have to be some of its moist, delicious, tender, juicy sandwiches? Can't someone else hate gay people? When politicians got involved, the debate got even more heated. Chick-fil-A later circulated an internal memo, noting respect for all sexual orientations. The winner of this one, same-sex marriage. Looking back on the year in feuds, despite our differences, we just might be heading in a brighter direction where divas share the spotlight, where bad boys learn to be good, 
where you can buy two instead of one if you still need that sugar rush. And we're in this, the greatest country in the world, we can have our chicken and same-sex marriage too. Next, who says politics can't be fun? From hair to muscles to foot and mouth disease. I've known eight presidents, three of them in a It doesn't matter what your party is. Coming up. The year continues. Once again, Katie Couric. Will Rogers once said, there's no trick to being a humorist when you have the whole government working for you. So he would have had a field day over the past year, make that the past two years, watching the race to the White House. And I bet he would have had something else to say, TGIO, thank God it's over. Once upon a time, eight Republicans dreamed of being the 45th president. But early this year, in the frozen cornfields of Iowa, Four of the candidates got a wake-up call that their dream was only an expensive fairy tale. Oops. Mitt Romney remained the favorite, but before finally settling down, the voters seemed to want to date around. In January, South Carolina swooned over Newt Gingrich. A week before Valentine's Day, it was Rick Santorum who seemed headed for the altar when he won over voters in Colorado, Missouri, and Minnesota. Super On Super Tuesday, those January to March infatuations ended like so many others when the voters said, I do, to the guy with the most money and the best hair. I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. But into each life, some rain must fall. And for the next few months, Romney kept the umbrella handy. He stumbled in London by questioning whether America's closest ally could host a successful Olympic Games. There are a few things that were disconcerting. The stories about the uh, private security firm not having enough people. Back home, Romney's running mate, Congressman Paul Ryan, also ran into trouble after bragging on a radio show about his marathon time. Just got to ask, what's your personal best? Uh, under three, I think, you know, high two. Right? You got two hours and 50 minutes. Holy smokes. Runner's World magazine said, not so fast, and broke the story that Ryan's actual time was north of four hours. Hurricane Isaac delayed the Republican convention in Tampa, but a bigger, more unpredictable storm was brewing. This one was named Clint. When you heard that Clint Eastwood was gonna come out, everyone was like, this is gonna be great. And it was great, just for the Democrats. What do you want me to tell Romney? I can't tell him to do that. I can't do that to himself. Also great for Democrats was the secret recording of Romney writing off 47% of voters as government freeloaders who believe that they're entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. What the comment did was convey to millions of Americans, he really is what the caricature that the Obama campaign has been painting of him. By the night of the first debate in the Mile High City, the support for Governor Romney was at an election year low. Reporters were already writing the obituary of his campaign. Republicans were already publicly pointing fingers as to who lost the election. 90 minutes later, everything changed. President Obama's debate performance was characterized as disengaged, listless, and utterly dismal. And that was from his most ardent supporters. I don't know what he was doing out there. He had his head down. He was enduring the debate rather than fighting it. Where was Obama tonight? Thank you. President Obama got the message. I particularly want to apologize to Chris Matthews. I don't know how he let Romney get away with the crap no. he threw out tonight. Four years ago, I gave him a thrill up his leg. This time around, I gave him a stroke. With Romney now surging in the national polls, <laughs> it was up to the sometimes verbally challenged Vice President Joe Biden. When I've known eight presidents, three of them intimately. The president has a big stick. To try to get the campaign back on track. Charming in his way, but sometimes puts his foot in his mouth. There is no give up in America. I've had it up to here with us. Biden's feistiness at the vice presidential debate. That's a bunch of malarkey. Was celebrated on Saturday Night Live. I personally put together a bipartisan Medicare plan. Yeah, there's not one Democrat who endorsed it. A Democratic congressman said he liked it. Yeah, he's missing. He's presumed dead. <laughs> 
that. Biden seemed to re-energize the Obama campaign, and the president came out swinging in the final two debates. You've been all over the map. Every time you've offered an opinion, you've been wrong. By election day, even as swing states began falling for Obama-Biden, he has won the state of Virginia. The winner in Wisconsin will be Barack Obama. Fox News commentator Carl Rove, it's going to be a Republican victory, remained pretty certain that Mitt Romney would still pull out the victory. Look, here's the deal. Even after Fox News not only called Ohio for Obama, but announced the president had been reelected. Do you believe that Ohio has been settled? No, I don't. And, 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 and look, if we, if we, if we are... It reminded me, did you ever see trading places at the end where he comes out and he's like, turn those machines back on! Turn those machines back on! He just did not believe that Obama won. Turn those machines back on! But he had. After years of campaigning and a record $2 billion spent, the 2012 presidential election was finally over. It was time for a much-needed rest. Maybe that's why Florida Senator Marco Rubio, a likely Republican candidate in 2016, waited almost two weeks before traveling to the frozen cornfields of Iowa. Next, we gave you the picture. You gave us the captions. Meaning Katie. When we come back. The year with Katie Couric continues. As the year comes to a close, it gives us all a chance to look back on some of the people who left us and also left a lasting imprint on our lives. From voices that soared and took us to new heights to the man who took us all the way to the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. There are places to go beyond belief. Liftoff of SDS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. I was maybe more excited about uh, getting a chance to fly early than I was about getting to be the first woman. At last. My love has come along. is a master of one aspect of medicine, open wallet surgery. <laughs> Live from Philadelphia, it's time for America's favorite dance party, American. I have a terrible problem because people keep referring to me as America's oldest living teenager. Hi, Dick Clark, I'm going to you live from Times Square in New York City. For now, Dick Clark. So long. Last dance, last chance for love. I think that music is yes, the one thing that gets inside your body and you can't get it out. Last dance, last dance, last dance, last dance. I'm Don Cornelius, and as always in parting, we wish you love, peace, and so. Memories like the corners of my mind. One singular sensation, every little step she takes. One. Men don't really want to be friends with women. They've already got friends. They've got men friends that they can talk to about all the important things. I have a number of men friends and there is no sex involved. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You only think you do. I don't think it's that awful lot. JR, try and be a little patient. Here, pick out something real nice and go for the Dallas. Now, you gonna get dressed or am I gonna have to do it for you? That's a wonderful symbol that hits, hits me in my heart about dictatorship in China. They don't need translation. I know, I know what you say. Can we, can we all get along?
what I'd been so scared of wasn't really worth being scared of at all. Thanks so much for being with us tonight as we bring down the curtain on 2012. And here's a look at some of the Katie memes you sent in. To see more of them and more on the biggest stories of the year, go to abcnews.com. And don't forget to pick up your copy of People's Special Issue, Best and Worst of 2012, on sale nationwide this Friday even though that is the day the Mayans say the world will end. I hope not, because I hope to see you back at this time next year. I'm Katie Couric. For all of us at ABC, good night and happy holidays. So